palletized work holding is a great way to boost production by minimizing labor and maximizing spindle time. In this first Fixture Friday video, I'll show you how we went from running two parts in a vise to 24 on one pallet. So here's the part we're making for the first operation. It's approximately inch and a half by inch and a quarter, half inch thick and machined from 6061 T6 aluminum. This first operation uses five tools, a face mill, drill, rougher, finisher, and a chamfer tool. Now running two at a time in a vise used to take four minutes, 46 seconds, which works out to two minutes, 23 seconds per part. Now let's take a look at this pallet. We're running 24 parts on a single 10 by 12 inch pallet. Same tools as before, but we still only had a total of five tool changes for all 24 parts. Now to produce 24 parts, two at a time in a vise, would have required 60 total tool changes. That's a huge time boost right there, not to mention the additional wear on the holders and the tool changer itself. We're also machining the parts in closer proximity to each other, so there's less time spent traveling to the next part. This is why we've coined the phrase high density work holding. Now all these benefits added up to a cycle time of 40 minutes, 48 seconds for the entire pallet. This works out to one minute, 42 seconds per part. And it doesn't end there. Think about how much time it would take to change two parts in and out of a vise every five minutes. Now that depends on the operator, but I can tell you changing this pallet of 24 parts only takes about 20 seconds with cleaning. Okay, enough math. Let's take a look at the design details. The first thing you'll notice is the starting stock size. We've minimized our need to saw individual part blanks and opted to machine them in strips that yield six parts per blank. At the end, we simply slot them apart into individual pieces at the end of the cycle. We're also using these rocker style clamps in the three quarter width, and we're using one per part. Now, the manufacturer of these clamps usually illustrates machining a channel for these clamps, but don't do that. We don't recommend slots because the material in between the clamps actually helps strengthen the pallet from the forces that want to spread the channel apart. Instead, simply machine a pocket for each clamp and then pattern it across the whole pallet. You'll also notice this pallet is a mirror image of itself. The reason for that is that if we continued the pattern, the back sides of the clamp would have a thinner section of material to press against. In this configuration, the broad side of the workpiece is contacting the outer edge of the pallet, which spreads the force across a larger area and lowers stress on the pallet. It's a small detail, but I feel it's worth it for the long run. One final thing to point out is that we always add helicoil thread inserts so we have a more durable thread to engage in for longer pallet life. Okay, I hope you got a lot out of this video, and if you did, subscribe. We've got a lot more Fix Your Friday videos that we're rolling out weekly. So until next Friday, go innovate your production.